This week on Retro Break, I'm taking a look at five amazing Game Boy Homebrew games that were published by Cat Skull Electronics. These are all available over on their website and I've chosen five to show off in this week's video, so let's get straight into it. But first, if you like the look of these amazing watercolour artworks here, if you join my channel sponsor Bifrost Bridge Studios on their higher Patreon tier, you can choose one of these artworks. Don't they just look absolutely incredible? And now with that said, let's take a look at the first of five games here. This one is called DMG Deals Damage. So this game was released in 2019 by Dr. Lundos to celebrate the console's 30th anniversary. In the game, you play as the original Game Boy going through a series of rooms. In these rooms, you have to fight all sorts of other handheld consoles, including the Microvision, the GB Boy Classic, the smartphone, the iPhone XS Max, the Nokia 5110, the Nokia 3310, the Nokia N-Gage, the Tamagotchi, the Wonderswan, the Turbo Express, the Supervision, and the Game Plus. Although it doesn't actually name the consoles in the game itself, you can see a list of them all on the game's itch.io page, and it's a really nice trip down memory lane, as well as a bit of a history lesson for people who haven't played all of these systems. As for the gameplay, it's kind of like Robotron or Smash TV, where you have to move through each room and kill all of the enemies before you can advance to the next one. There's an interesting mechanic which allows you to control both hands on the Game Boy separately using the A and B buttons. Using both hands you can grab the enemies and either throw them at the walls or at each other. It starts out easy enough, but a few rooms in you'll be greeted with the first of several boss fights. These can get pretty challenging, in fact I still haven't managed to get past the third one. All in all, it's a really fun game and definitely one that everyone who still has a Game Boy lying around should check out. And even if you don't, you can actually play it online on their itch.io page. In fact, I think you can play all of these games online as well. So after you've watched this video, if you want to try any of these games for yourself, you can check the links in the description and visit each of their pages. Now the second game we're looking at here, this one is called Death Planet. Death Planet was developed by Mackerel Interactive. The intro to the game is basically Star Wars, with you fly into the centre of a death planet to deactivate it and save humanity. The game itself is incredibly simple, you fly a spaceship in a straight line going straight into the screen and you can move up and down to dodge the walls. It's a very simple but addictive game with several different stages. Honestly I found it quite hypnotic after a while. I actually spent longer playing this game than any of the others. The music as well was extremely catchy. Apart from that though, there's not really that much to say about the game. If you're watching the gameplay right now, that's basically all the entire game is. It does get very challenging later on though, I only actually managed to get to stage 3. So let me know down in the comments below if any of you managed to get past stage 3, and let me know how many stages there are in the game as well. It's a really great game and it's one to play if you just want to zone out for a while and really focus on one thing. One other thing I have to mention about this game is how good and how smooth it looks. The entire game runs at a solid 60 frames a second, even on the original Game Boy system. And according to its itch.io page, it has 13 shades of real-time dithering, which gives it that really cool 3D into the screen effect. And as well as that, all of this somehow fits on a 32 kilobyte ROM. Even though it plays more like a prototype or a proof of concept, it is a really impressive thing to see on the system. So I'm sure you'll agree that even though it's only a short and simple game, it is very addictive. Now the next game we're looking at is one called Guns N' Riders. Guns N' Riders was made in 2016 by J.M. Clement. The really cool thing about this game is the fact that he actually uploaded the entire source code for the game to his GitHub page. So if, like me, you're into game development and want to know what goes into making a Game Boy game, then I highly recommend going and checking it out. I'll put a link in the description, and you can actually read through all of the C code and see how it was all put together. I thought it was really, really fascinating to look through. In terms of the gameplay itself, it's a very simple game where you constantly move into the right and you just have to try and kill as many cowboys as possible without getting shot yourself. That's all there is to the game really, it gets harder as it goes on as you'd expect, the level starts scrolling slightly faster, and of course there's a high score at the end of it. If you do decide to play it, let me know your high score down in the comments below. Two more games now, and the second to last one here is called Sheep It Up. 
So this one was made by someone called Dr. Ludos in 2017, and just like the game before it, the reason why I'm so fascinated with this game is not exactly the gameplay itself, which as you can see is as basic as it gets. The main thing that I found so fascinating about this game is the fact that the developer made a Gamma Sutra blog post about how he created the game, how he made the tiles, how he used the sprite sheets, how he coded it back in 2017, a kind of look into the different development tools that were available back then compared to when the Game Boy was new. It's a really, really interesting read. I'll put a link in the description and if you're interested, like I said about the last game, I highly recommend going and checking this out and if you ever want to make your own game for the Game Boy, I'm sure it'd be a really valuable resource as well. As you can see, the game is extremely simple, you basically just press A to jump and you have to latch onto these Velcro pads that are flying through the sky. It's kind of a really simple take on something like the Tobu Tobu Girl that I reviewed a few years ago. It's just another one of those really addictive One More Go style games. My high score for this one was 73, so let me know if you can beat that. And saving the best till last, of course, the final game that I've got to show you guys in this week's video is called Die and Retry. So what is Die and Retry all about? At its core, it's a simple maze game where you control a ball and go around collecting coins and keys in order to unlock the exit to each stage. Right from level 1 though, you'll notice why the game is called Die and Retry. It's very unforgiving. If you touch any of the moving obstacles in the levels, it's instant death. All of the coins, all of the items reset, and you're back to the start of the level. The thing I really like about this game though, at least from what I've played so far, is the fact that every stage fits on one screen. You can always see where you need to go, and there's never too much to collect in a single level that it begins to feel like a chore. Even though I was beginning to rip my hair out in frustration by only level 4, I can safely say that this is the game out of all of the ones that I've shown today that I can see myself going back to revisit over and over again. There's apparently 30 different stages, and maybe one day I'll try and see all of them. It reminds me a lot of the bouncing ball game that I showed off in the last one of these 5 great Game Boy Homebrew videos. Like I said at the start, if you haven't seen any of those yet, definitely go and check them out. I'll put a link to my Homebrew Games playlist in the description, and if there's any other Homebrew Games that you'd like me to cover on this channel as well, please feel free to let me know either down in the comments below, or over on my Twitter, or over on Discord. So there we go, that was five more great Game Boy Homebrew games. They've got a lot more over on their website, so I'll put a link in the description if you want to go and check them out and pick up some of these physical games for yourselves. I will be ordering the others off the site soon, so expect another video in the future where I talk about some more of their games. Please consider subscribing, check out my other Game Boy Homebrew game videos, there's quite a lot now, and I am looking to cover every single one I can get my hands on. So please subscribe if you enjoyed these, there's loads more to come. And if you really enjoyed it, please consider checking me out on Patreon to join all of the amazing people at the bottom of the screen right now. That's it for this episode, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all next week for the next one. Goodbye!